The adoption of the agenda. Have all the commissioners read the agenda? Are there any edits, corrections? Is there a motion to adopt? Move approval. All right, any questions? All right, seeing I, none, all in favor, Madam, say. Oh, you do have a question. Madam, I just want to um, let the commission know that I'll be recusing myself from items number four and 11. Four and 11. Thank you and welcome. We missed Thank you. you. <laughs> I'll note that as an abstention for quorum issues. So it's not a recusal, it'll be an, an abstention. Okay, thank you. thank you. All right, is there a motion to adopt? I think we had a motion a second. Any questions? We got Commissioner, um, Commissioner Hunters. <laughs> um, abstentions in the record. Um, all in favor? I need to abstain from number 19. All right, Commissioner Sims, number 19. Are there any other abstentions while we're doing it? Um, all right. All in favor of adopting the agenda, say aye. Aye. Any oppose? Ayes have it. The agenda is adopted. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the October 25th, 2018 minutes. Have everyone read the minutes? Okay. Um, any edits, corrections? Is, okay. <laughs> Second. Second. All right. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Minutes are approved. So the next item on the agenda um, is the recognition of council members. So um, I think the first one I have on my list is Councilman Swope. Would you like to speak? Yes, Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen of the Commission, thank you for hearing us today, and as always, thank you for your service. I have two things on the agenda. One is 2018 SP 6001. Uh, it is on consent right now, and I'd love for it to stay on consent. I think it will. Um, but if I can't address one little issue with that one, this has taken years to put together because part of the land that is not going to be developed on this is, with any luck with Public Works, going to become a traffic circle at the intersection of Banbury Crossing, Mount Pisgah, and Edmondson Pike. So as you consider all these tonight, again, this one's on consent, but there is a traffic circle involved in all this that should relieve a whole lot of problems on that particular road. Um, the second one is a disapproved bill tonight, 2018-Z. It's item number 20 on your agenda, 113-PR-001. Um, this is down off Bluff Road. It's a very large piece of property, and a builder named Liga, Liga Assets, brought to me a proposal to do a very, very, very cool project. Um, there is a problem with ingress and egress on this property, and as a consequence, that's why we're looking at a base zoning change instead of an SP. But that piece of property right there is currently in negotiation to be bought, which would alleviate the second entrance of ingress and egress on this property. So I believe this all stands by policy. And as you will hear from Mr. Dale later, uh, this doesn't need to be complicated. We don't need to complicate this with a big messy SP. We're just asking for a very simple base zoning on it. And I would appreciate you granting us that. Again, thank you for your service. Have a great day. Thank you. Next council member, Council Lady Haywood, would you like to speak now? Um, I'll just speak later. Okay. Um, Councilman Withers, would you like to speak now or wait? All right. Let's see any other council members. Are there any other council members that we did not call? Okay. All right. So we will move now to item E, which is items for deferral and withdrawal. Okay, I have the following items for deferral or withdrawal. Item 1A on page four of your agenda, 2018 CP 006002, the Bellevue Community Plan Amendment. 
Staff recommendation is to defer to the December 13th, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Item 1B, the associated case, 2018 SP 043001, Security Central Storage SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to the December 13th meeting. Item number four, 2018 SP 050001, the 6280 New Hope Road SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to the December 13th meeting. And I will note that Commissioner G is, is uh, abstaining from that item. Item number five, 2018 SP 058001, the 1265 McGavick Pike SP. Staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Item number seven, 2018 SP 062001, the 222 through 228 Donaldson Pike SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to December 13th. Item number eight, 2018 S 110001, the Snyder One Lot Subdivision. Staff recommendation is to defer to December 13th. And item number 14 on page six of your agenda, 2018 SP 074001, the 3049 Earhart SP. Staff recommendation is to defer to the December 13th Planning Commission. Thank you. So we'll just repeat those to make sure we have them all down. So items for deferral or withdrawal are items 1A, 1B, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 14. Is that right? Correct. All right. So um, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, the ayes have it. Those items have been deferred or withdrawn. So the next item on the agenda um, <clears throat> consists of the consent items. As information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chantry or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. As notice to the public, items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No, public, no individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. The following items are on the consent agenda. Item number three on page five of your agenda, 2018Z005TX001, a request for an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code to, pertaining to parking requirements. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number six on page five of your agenda, 2018SP060001, the Mount Pisgah and, Ed and Edmondson SP. It's a request to rezone from AR2A to SP to permit 38 single family residential lots. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number nine on page six of your agenda, 2018S, 155001, 2410 Una Antioch Pike. It's a request for final plat approval to create five lots. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 10, 2017Z087PR001, a request to rezone from RS5 to R6A for property located on West McKinney Avenue. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 11, 2018SP063001, the 1114 West Grove SP, a request to rezone from R8 to SP for properties located on West Grove Avenue to permit five multifamily residential units. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. And I will note that Commissioner G is um, abstaining from that item. Item number 12, 2018 CP002002, the Parkwood Union Hill Community Plan Amendment. It's a request to amend the Parkwood, Hill, Parkwood Union Hill Community Plan by changing from T3 Suburban Neighborhood Evolving to T3 Suburban Neighborhood Center for property located on Skyline Ridge, Ro Ridge Drive. 
staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 13, 2018 SP 070001, the West End Residential SP. It's a request to rezone from MUIA to SP for properties located on West End Avenue to permit 360 multifamily units, 6,500 square feet of retail and restaurant, owner-occupied and non-owner-occupied short-term rentals. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. And I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is abstaining from that item. Item number 15, <clears throat> 2018Z081PR001 on page seven of your agenda. A request to rezone from R8 to RM9A for property located on Cliff Drive. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 16, 2018Z101PR001, a request to rezone from IR to IG zoning for property located on Lebanon Pike. Staff recommendation is to approve, and I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is abstaining from that item. Item number 17, 2018Z110PR001, a request to rezone from OR20 to MUL zoning for property located on Park Drive. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item 18, 2018Z111PR001, a request to rezone from RS5 to R6A for property located on 14th Avenue North. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item 19, 2018Z112 PR001, a request to rezone from MUN to MULA zoning for property located on 6th Avenue North. Staff recommendation is to approve, and I will note that Commissioners Blackshear and Sims are abstaining from that item. Item number 21, 2018Z114 PR001, a request to rezone from RS5 to MULA for property located on Lena Street. Staff recommendation is to approve. Sorry, RS5 to MULA on Lena, on Lena Street. Staff recommendation is to approve. And item number 22 on page 8 of your agenda, the Bellevue Center revision and final. It's a request to revise the preliminary plan and for final site plan approval for a portion of a planned unit development. Um, on Highway 70 South to permit 62,000 square foot hotel. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Under other business on page eight, item 23, a contract amendment for Dara Sanders. And item 27, to accept the director's report and approve administrative items. All right, I will also note my abstention from item 22. So I'm going to go back and read these consent agenda items just to make sure we have them all. Um, so 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, and 27. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so we have heard the consent agenda items. Um, do we have a motion to approve these? Second. Second, okay, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the ayes have it. Those consent agenda items have now um, been approved and we have, So just a quick comment, Lisa and Bob, Lisa and Bob, just to confirm, we're going to be hearing items two and items 20. Is that correct? Okay, just wanted to let folks in the audience and the commission know that we are going to lose a quorum at six o'clock. So in the event that we're not able to hear both items tonight, I will ask for a motion to defer the second item. So, Mr. Dale, I think that that's your application. So that's where we are. I'm, opt I'm hopeful that we'll be able to hear both, but just a heads up. Thank you. All right, so the next item on our agenda is the presentation of item number two.
All right. Item two is a, a periodic review of a portion of the park at Ewing Creek specific plan district. This SP is located on the west side of White's Creek Pike, south of Briley Parkway. Oh. Which is here for reference. Ewing Creek runs along the northern boundary of the site. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission find the SP to be active. The current zoning on the property is specific plan mixed industrial. Um, you can see that there's moderate intensity residential in the RS10 and RS7.5 zoning districts to the south and west. Um, there's some R8 zoning on large parcels to the north. And then across White's Creek Pike, um, there's AR2A and IWD industrial zoning. This specific plan was enacted by the Metro Council in October 2009. The plan that you're looking at um, is faint, but it is the original um, preliminary plan approved for this SP. Um, you have White's Creek Pike um, sort of running um, along the right-hand side of the, the shaded area, and then again, Ewing Creek to the north. The SP is organized into three districts. Um, the first is District A, which is approximately 12 acres along the White's Creek Pike frontage here. Um, and that district permits commercial, retail, office, and warehouse uses. And then District B, which is in the interior of the site, contains about 40 acres and permits industrial, office, and warehouse uses. And then finally, District C, which is the remainder of the site wrapping around the perimeter, um, permits open space vegetated and vegetated buffers to screen and separate the uses allowed elsewhere in the SP from the surrounding residential areas. The hatching that you see represents the portions of the SP that are under review. Um, there is an existing development primarily in District B um, that is uh, developed as a facility for UPS and that portion of the SP is not under review at this time. So section 17.40.106.I of the zoning ordinance authorizes the planning commission, a council member, or the property owner of the area to be reviewed to request that the planning commission review any specific plan or portion thereof to determine whether the SP is inactive, and if so, to recommend to the council what action should be taken with respect to the SP. This periodic review was requested by council member Sharon Hurt. The, f uh, the first step in the process, which is the question before the Planning Commission this evening, um, is to determine whether the SP is active or inactive. And the zoning ordinance directs the Commission um, to establish three findings in order to um, determine that the SP is inactive. And those are whether four or more years have passed um, since the SP was either originally enacted, amended by council, or reviewed under this process. Um, secondly, whether construction has commenced, has begun on the portion of the SP under review. And third, whether there's been acquisition of right of way from a third party or construction of offsite improvements. Um, and then the commission may also consider the aggregate of actions, if any, taken in the prior 12 months to develop the portion of the SP under review. So three concrete findings and then a larger aggregate of actions um, that you can consider as well. So staff um, has received information from the owner regarding um, their statements of actions that have occurred for development of this property. Staff has also reviewed Metro's records related to this SP. Um, the SP was enacted in 2009 um, by Metro Council. It has not been amended or reviewed, um, so four years have elapsed since that time. Um, and also there has been no acquisition of right-of-way or off-site improvements. Um, so those two findings we can make right away. So staff has focused primarily on the second finding and on the aggregate of actions um, discussion. For the second finding um, regarding construction, as part of the SP approval, the mix of uses in districts A and B of the SP was approved based on limiting approximately 40 acres of the site in district C to open space and buffering, including construction of wetlands, floodplain restoration, and tree planting um, to, to enhance those buffer areas. Completion of the activities in district C to enhance the buffers was a necessary first step prior to developing the other portions of the site. 
In April of 2011, the owners were granted approval of a final site plan and grading permit, um, authorizing the construction of wetlands and the floodplain restoration activities, um, as called for in the preliminary SP. Metro's final inspections related to that grading permit were completed in August of 2017. Um, those dates are from Metro's records and they're provided as background. I would note that the construction finding doesn't have a time limit um, in it. Moving on to the aggregate of actions, um, unlike the construction finding, this does direct the Planning Commission to consider only the aggregate of actions that have occurred in the 12 months prior to this SP review being initiated. And that request was made um, in August on August 31st of this year. So that's the um, 12 months prior to that date. Um, the owners have provided information, which you saw in your staff report, related to actions throughout the life of this SP. Um, staff focused our review on those activities from that information that, that occurred within the last 12 months. Um, and those were specifically, there was a requirement of the council ordinance that prior to any final site plan um, being issued under this SP, a landscape a maintenance agreement be recorded to ensure that the buffer areas would be maintained over time. And that agreement was recorded um, with in October of 2017, and that was to fulfill the council condition. Secondly, um, the owner sought approval from council <laughs> for an intended use to be located on a portion of the, the property, um, which occurred under a process commonly referred to as the Jackson Law process. And that process um, required approval from council for the location of the use before any permits associated with that use could be applied for or developed. So it was a necessary step prior to moving forward with permits for an intended use. Based on the commencement of construction um, on a portion of the SP, and on the aggregate of actions that have taken, been taken to initiate development within the remaining portion in the past 12 months, staff recommends that the Planning Commission find the SP to be active. Okay. So um, I understand there have been um, discussions amongst the interested stakeholders, uh, and, and perhaps there's not going to be much public discussion necessary at this point, but we can just get a show of hands of those who would be in favor of the staff's recommendation to find the SP active. Okay, I think we got some hands, reluctant, but we got them. <laughs> Do we have a show of hands of those who would be opposed to staff's recommendation? Okay. Just to put it in the public record, this case is a little unusual because the applicant is uh, Council Lady Hurt. She's not here. Typically, we would start there. So we're talking about how to proceed. Um, and my recommendation to the chair would be to open the item for public hearing and start with those who um, agree with staff recommendation that the, that the item be found active. And then once that closes, um, to go to anyone who disagrees and um, and just per the, the commission's typical rules, we would give the property owner 10 minutes um, to uh, present their views and then uh, five minutes for anyone who requests, uh, who is representing an organization and two minutes um, for folks who just wanna speak in either case. That would be my recommendation as the applicant is not here. So we will go ahead and do that. So we will open the public hearing, and for those who are um, in favor of staff's recommendation to find the SP active and who would like to speak, um, if you could um, line up. But I would start with the property owner first. Okay. They get 10 minutes. Okay. 
property owner <laughs> representative. Sure. At, at the front end, before I begin the presentation, I think there's going to be a very shortened public hearing today, which I know will not significantly disappoint most of you. Uh, but at the end of the day, I wanted to clarify just procedurally. I understand the time allocated per side. Uh, Bill Farmer, very capable lawyer, somebody I've known for a long time, and I have been in extensive negotiation to try to agree things that could be uh, codified between he and I as to what the parties had agreed to here. We've done that and met down here today, and he and I have inked that agreement. We've got 12 copies of that, which is an agreement between my client, who are the owners of the property, and the potential uh, owner of this on-site facility there. Uh, I represent both of them. To my knowledge, Bill represents everybody that is here, but I can't say that. There may be somebody he was doing the best he could to confirm it, but I did want to clarify at the front end that with respect to the presentation today, since Council Lady Hurt is not here and is in California, I wanted to ask the Commission at the front end that uh, for my 10 minutes, uh, Bill Farmer's here. He can confirm to you that we've reached an agreement with respect to issues between us. I know the Commission doesn't like conditional approvals. Uh, our agreement clearly states that he and I would agree that this SP is active and it would note the agreement between he and me, period. We can make it part of the record, doesn't make it a conditional approval, but we will want it noted. It's agreement between him and me that we would agree to certain things on the site uh, with the predicate that he would confirm today that the SP is active. So rather than take my 10 minutes, I'd like to say with that explanation, I fully understand there's a lot of confusion from people here that are not quite sure how we're gonna handle this, but I wanna make it very clear to them that I've reached an agreement Mr. Farmer's agreed to that agreement, we've signed it, we've inked it, and it would only be with that noted between us that we would agree that this is active. Uh, Mr. Farmer's here, if he can confirm that, I think the simplest thing for me to do is to just save all of my time and there may be nobody objecting to anything, in which case we can close the public hearing and move on. Uh, but I did want to be very simple and direct about the fact there's a lot of people here who spend a lot of time and energy involved in this thing. We appreciate that, and I want them to make sure that I've said it several times being declared active on this SP is clearly with a notation that Bill and I have inked an agreement. Uh, we've known each other for 40 years. It's legally enforceable. That's where we are. So I'd like to ask if Bill would confirm what I've said to you, and then I'll save any of my time. I may not need to say anything uh, unless somebody uh, objects to what we've agreed to uh, and wants to argue that it's still inactive. Bill? So we'll hear from Bill Farmer. Thank you, Chairman, members of the Commission. It's a privilege to be here. I, I, uh, once a month, I sit where you're sitting and listen to the civil service people come with their hearings and, and concerns and understand uh, where you are. Um, Mr. White's uh, correct. We have reached an agreement. We understand that the, it's not a condition precedent. Uh, I, the representation is, is an odd issue. As you might recall, two weeks ago, uh, Councilman Hurt came and asked that the matter be deferred for two weeks, which y'all agreed to do. Uh, so that uh, the, the, the affected folks could hire counsel. And uh, they hired me, but uh, now who they are, it, 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 it's, it's the uh, Haines Trinity Neighborhood Coalition, which is comprised of eight separate neighborhoods, two churches, and one nonprofit who are uh, impacted by uh, what's going on on this particular piece of property. Uh, we have reached an agreement, we've struggled uh, I found that usually the best agreements are those in which neither side is happy. And, I, and we may have come to that, actually, but uh, it, is, it is what it is. Uh, uh, we've done our very best, and because the agreement requires me to speak on behalf of the clients that I represent, which again is a Hayes Trinity Neighborhood Coalition, uh, we would uh, ask that you find uh, the SP active. Thank you very much. So with, with the chair's permission, um, I wanted to make clear that the staff has not reviewed this agreement. It's a private agreement. It is not binding to this commission. It's not being treated as a condition. The commission routinely accepts letters, emails, other exhibits as part of our sort of, as part of the official record of any action, and that's how this that's how I'm seeing this particular um, agreement, which is being passed out now. Do you have anything to add, uh, legal? Just that uh, 
everybody should be operating with the ex expectation that this is non-enforceable by Metro uh, because it is a private agreement as stated by the parties. Okay, so um, if there are any members in the audience today who would like to speak in favor of the staff's recommendation, you can line up and speak. It looks like there are none. If, if anyone in here is to speak against staff's recommendation, you are also welcome to speak. So, so just to clarify again, if anyone wants to speak, that the SP should be found inactive. Um, please. That would be the opposition. <laughs> okay. Any, okay, looks like we have one person. If you give us your name and your address, you have two minutes to speak. Oh, five. <coughs> Thank All right. You. If you're rep you're representing uh, an organization. I'm not. This okay. This is more of a. This is more of just a, a hope, perhaps, and a wish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm actually a, a part of this group that originally did a, oppose the SP and wanted to make it inactive, but. It sounds like there's some sort of an agreement, which I'm not, I have no idea what the agreement is. So anyway, my name is Zach Deere. I live in Whites Creek, 681 Brick Church Lane. Um, I guess I would just ask that, that in the future, council, commission, somebody has to do some work on these SPs. This was a 10 year old SP that hadn't, you know, that had nothing to do with what was going on in Nashville today and is basically gonna be surrounded by a community that in 10 years, you know, people wouldn't even think about putting in an industrial area into that, into that community. And so I just, I hope that, it, I've, I've dealt with SPs on a lot of different levels. I've fought them in the council. Their, you know, codes doesn't keep up with them. It seems like there are just a lot of things slipping through the cracks. And I'm just very frustrated that that seems to be the only reason that I come to these meetings, unfortunately. And I, I'm on this side, so I'm not going to say anything about what, what they're going on. I just want to make a point that something has to be done about SPs because they're driving people in Nashville absolutely crazy. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry for the confusion, too. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, it looks like there's no one else to speak, so I will go ahead and close the, the public hearing. All right. So <laughs> commissioners. Um, can I make a motion? <laughs> you can. Move approval of staff's recommendation to find it active. All right. Do we have any discussion? Do we need to do anything to include this as part of the record? We don't. It won't be. It will, part it will happen. It will be part of the record. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right, so we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor of um, approving staff's recommendation of the SP be active, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the ayes have it. The SP is found to be active. So that is the <coughs> end of item two. We are on to item 20. Item number 20 is a request to rezone from AR28. <coughs> 
if you are having conversations, if you could take that out, we are still hearing items. We're on item number 20. Um, item number 20 is a request to rezone from AR2A to single family residential RS10 and multifamily residential RM4. Can all outside conversation be moved to the hall so we can hear item number 20? Thank you. Uh, RS10 and RM4 zoning uh, located on 60.19 acres on the west side of Bluff Road. Um, here is a site outlined in red. Bluff Road um, runs along the eastern property line. Uh, the site is south of Nolansville, Pike, and Holt Road. <clears throat> Staff recommendation is to disapprove. The site contains two vacant parcels. Um, the dashed line on the screen, it's kind of hard to see, located in the middle of the two parcels, represents the current parcel boundaries. Um, the red lines indicate the proposed zoning district. You have RS10 on the northern part of the property and then RM4 on the remaining portion of the property. Uh, as a point of reference, this is Williamson County to the south. The proposed RS10 boundary, um, as is highlighted in gray on the screen, includes 21 acres, and then the RM4 boundary um, is in, shown in this hatching pattern, and it includes 39.19 acres. The surrounding area primarily includes low-intensity residential um, and vacant properties, with the exception of a residential SP to the north here uh, at Nolansville and Holt, and then you also have some residential and non-residential properties along the corridor. We're now looking at a different view of the site. Um, due to the size of the site, there wasn't a way to um, capture the whole bird's eye view, so we had to rotate the, um, the this view 90 degrees, but I'll help orient you. Here is Bluff Road now, um, and then here is Williamson County on the left side. Um, here are the parcel boundaries. So you have one parcel, second parcel here, and then here um, on the right side is RS10 proposed and then RM4 um, to the left. The site contains heavy vegetation and is accessed from Bluff Road, which again is uh, down here. Uh, Mill Creek, which is a creek that um, is located on the opposite side of Bluff Road, runs along the eastern property line and um, it merges with Holt Creek, which runs along the northern property lines here. The site is located in two policy areas, in the T3 neighborhood evolving policy and in the conservation policy. Conservation policy is identified along the entire eastern property line, um, identifying, and a majority of the northern property line, identifying um, floodway and floodplain and associated stormwater regulation buffers, um, stormwater or stream buffers associated with the mill and the Holt Creeks, um, and a significant area of steep slopes in excess of 25%. Conservation policy is also identified internal to the site where you have some contiguous areas of steep slopes. Bluff Road, which again is on the right-hand side, is the site's only point of access and is located within the floodplain and portions of the floodway and is situated at a much lower elevation um, than the hillside portion of the property on the west side of Bluff Road. The areas within conservation policy bisect the front of the site from the unencumbered areas um, behind the floodplain and located in T3 neighborhood evolving policy. The areas within T3 neighborhood evolving policy may support new residential development. However, given the environmentally constrained areas on the rest of the site, the feasibility of ensuring a sensitive design that preserves the natural landform while also achieving the goals of T3 neighborhood evolving policy for additional housing choice um, and improved connectivity may be limited with the proposed RS10 and the RM4 zoning districts. 
Um, additionally, the density that could be permitted under a straight rezone of RS10 and RM4 may result in development that is too intense for this site. Um, given the site's limited access to Bluff Road, potentially conflicting with the regulations and controls of Metro Stormwater and Metro Fire. Staff does not find the requested rezone to be in keeping with policy guidance at this site and recommends a design-based SP that demonstrates protection and preservation of sensitive features on the site, um, improved access management, and a street network that um, is consistent with the goals of the policy. Therefore, staff recommendation is to disapprove. All right, <clears throat> so we will open this item up for public hearing. If the applicant wants to come up, 10 minutes. You can reserve two for rebuttal. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> I'm Roy Dale with Don Associates. I'm representing the applicant on this uh, submittal. Uh, Councilman Swope spoke to you earlier about this. Uh, he's spoken in support of this. Uh, we've already had a community meeting. There was no opposition at that community meeting, and I'd be surprised if anybody was in opposition today. Uh, originally, when we looked at this, we just looked at putting a blanket RM4 zoning on the property. It's about the least intense zoning as you could possibly have. If you wanted to look at some of the maps that were shown before, you'll see there's some adjacent or nearby properties that are zoned RM15 and even RM20. So RM4 really falls on the very low end of the spectrum. This is a neighborhood evolving policy, and so certainly that density falls within the range of the policy. Uh, when we originally submitted this, again, it was more or less a blanket RM4. Staff had some concerns about connectivity, and so we took the, the lower portions of the property, the flatter portions of the property, and decided that we would indicate that as RS10, and uh, that way you could ensure that there would be a road network through this property that connect to some of the adjacent properties. Uh, outside of the RS10, you do have some slopes. I think that those would all be covered by hillside standards that are in existence today. And so if someone decided to do that, I think there are protections already built in the zoning code that would address that. Likewise, areas that would be along any tributaries uh, would also have buffers that if you do a development plan, you have to stay with, away from those buffers. So I think that there should be adequate protection in this uh, request for base zone change. Uh, the council member felt like in this case that Maybe it was a little, I think he used the word overcomplicated, and I guess that could be possible. Uh, and in some instances, I think that a base zone change would provide what you're looking for, along with the zoning code requirements of hillside protections and uh, the stormwater requirements. Um, even access would have to be reviewed by Public Works and approved. So I think that those are all there. But in this case, there are many reasons why this applicant had to move quickly on this. They talked to the council member. Again, he met with the community. There was a, a meeting, people attended that meeting, and they were supportive. And I think that's all I could really add. Um, I think the council member probably said it all, and it's what he's looking for, and we would appreciate a, a recommendation of approval based upon the fact that I don't, this conf I don't think it conflicts with the base land use policy of neighborhood evolving. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this item? Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this item? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed, and so we will discuss as commissioners. Um, Councilman, would you like to go first? <laughs> Can I ask uh, Mr. Dale when was that meeting? Because I didn't know anything about it. Okay. <clears throat> it was I mean, just a community meeting. Okay yeah. yeah, I mean, we basically took the list that Planning Commission sends out, or we, we actually prepare them ourselves, but uh, we took that list, we notified everybody. Uh, it was probably about a month ago, uh, and it was just for those individual property owners, so no one would, wouldn't be an advertised public hearing, I don't guess. I know, maybe the council staff office, and you could probably Help me but with that. I live less than a mile from there, and uh -huh. I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. So it was, it was something that the council member called, notices were mailed out, and he conducted that meeting. Okay. That's my problem. I really don't, can't have an opinion because I haven't had a chance to attend the meeting or to engage with my community about it, so I'm going to abstain on voting on this. Commissioner Tews. I'm going to abstain too. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, the the councilman brought up like that chunk that that was another access to the site. 
but I haven't heard any reason why that that was, um, you know, why that was going to be a, uh, a impact as a decision. Currently, there's one access point from Bluff Road. Um, there, um, if we look up here, there's there may be a, a private drive with a, a small kind of. Um, maybe pedestrian bridge or a small bridge here, and maybe that's what the council member was talking about. He was talking about additional property, um, but the site that is before us tonight is access from, would be access from Bluff Road only. Okay, so it, it really didn't have an impact on um, the analysis, maybe I should say that. It didn't seem like it did, but I wanted to make sure I didn't miss a... Well. When we look at straight zones, we look at the maximum permitted density that could could work at this site. And in this case, if you took the acreage in the RS10 and the acreage in the RM4, it would result in potentially over 200 units. Um, they, their plants m may not be for that many units, but we always have to look at what could be permitted. And so with that, we had to kind of con consider um, the fire code and all that. And um, with there being one access point right now, um, we didn't feel comfortable with, with the straight zone change, knowing that that could be the, the okay. density. Yeah, like right now, just based on what I've seen, it, I think um, staff recommendation is probably the best um, that, you know, an SP that, um, you know, by, I'm, gonna, I'm reading, demonstrates protection and preservation of sensitive environmental features. Um, you know, there seems to be, uh, if you go back to the, um, satellite view. Um, it seems like that would be more, especially as it borders down here, that would be more in line of what you want to see, especially with the information I have right now. So I would um, uh, approve, I, I'm, I'm voting more, thinking more in favor of staff recommendation. Commissioner Haynes? I'm going to support staff's recommendation. Commissioner Sims? Same. Commissioner G? I just I just have some questions. Um, uh, should this be approved, um, the next step in the process um, in order to develop the property would be what and would any of the next steps come back before this commission? Uh, with the straight rezone, planning wouldn't see the building permits. It would go straight to codes, and, and then the, the stormwater and all the other agencies would review. Um, so stormwater, public works, traffic, they would, water services, they would take a look at the building permits. If part of it was developed as single family and it required a plat, then we would review any platting that took place, but so, not a development plan. So likely the RS-10 portion of the property would have to go through a subdivision, which the planning right. commission That's would right. review. Correct. Yeah. But the remaining portion. The RM4 wouldn't, if it didn't have to be platted, wouldn't come before planning. Okay. But they would still go through fire, marshal, public works, review, which would look at streets, access, traffic impact, potentially require a traffic impact study if it's more than 100 units or so. Is that likely? 75 is 75 generally units. the trigger. <clears throat> well, I understand the staff's um, concerns, certainly. Um, I think the uh, there are there are a lot of policies and um, procedures that the applicant would have to go through to uh, help protect uh, the sensitive environmental areas with the hillside standards and buffers and, and the uh, new stormwater regs and so on. That um, So I, I'm interested, and in, though it sounds like the rest of the commissions uh, may already have their, um, their minds made up, but uh, the commission is being asked to uh, approve a rezoning, not make a specific recommendation about what type of application they've submitted. In other words, it, it's a, the opinion of the staff that an SP might serve us better here, but it's not what the applicants asked. The applicants asked for approval of rezoning. So I think it's important to 
to keep that in mind, why sure we would all probably love to see an SP because we'd see where the access is and so on. It's important, to, I think, I think to remember that that's not really what we're being asked to consider. So, um, um, so it, you know, I'm given that it's consistent with policy. The, the request is at the lower end of the the density range um, within the policy. Um, understanding the concerns of you know how it may be developed, but also understanding that there are many procedures and policies in place that could would protect the, the property from some of those concerns, I would be inclined to support the, the request. And I don't think the staff has necessarily outlined a case that it's not consistent with policy. I think that staff's first evaluation is whether it's consistent with policy. But as we know, neighborhood evolving in an area that has important environmental constraints, we may look at a little differently than an evolving area that's in an urban area that's largely developed. And so the staff, I think, is responding to the environmental constraints on the site, the access concerns, and the other pieces of it. So I think they probably took a more nuanced look at um, what would be appropriate here as opposed to just saying, you know, it's within a range of what could be supported by evolving because that might be true in a different setting is probably where, unless staff, you have anything else to add to that, but that's. No, I think that's accurate. I, mean, I think the, the bluff road being in floodway, not just flood plain, but floodway was a, a real concern of staffs. And then the, the topography on this site, um, there are some slopes and ensuring that the whatever is designed on this property is consistent with the topography and knowing how, to, how this uh, number of units would Act, get access was important, and I, I don't know if there's a way to get a second point of access. Uh, we didn't have a, we didn't see where that was. We talked to the Councilman Swope about a possibility of another second point of access, but they uh, over to Holt Road, I think it was, and at, at the current time, I don't know of any access easements that are in place that would allow for that, and so we had a real concern about all of this being accessed through the floodway. Um, so in a, in a flooding situation, it, it, anything built on this property could potentially be trapped. And so we, we really needed more information and we thought we could get that through an SP. So short of having that information, we were recommending disapproval of the, of the zone change as filed. Thanks for that explanation. I, I'm, um, I, need, I think I need a better explanation of what, where the flood way is and the access points and um, <clears throat> and it may be why the councilman was uh, suggesting that the additional two small properties uh, may become accessible um, because it would uh, provide an additional access point. Um, so the floodway, <clears throat> so the side is, is outlined in this light blue, Bluff Road runs here. So um, it's kind of buried beneath these colors, but um, so the red is the slopes in excess of 25%, which is along the whole, uh, most of the frontage here on Bluff, and then the floodway is in blue. So you can see there's a little bit of overlap there. The creek is actually on the other side of Bluff Road, but the floodway extends um, on, on both, both sides of the road. So access would have to come through this way as far as we can tell. Sorry, could you point that out again? Access would have to come. Yeah, through. so access would have to come from Bluff Road, which is right here. So um, at the very southern point. Well, that, we don't know where it would we, come. It would have yeah, to. Yeah, we don't know exactly. Yeah. That's why we would like to see a, a SP plan to show us if there is a way to design access in a in a way that would preserve the the steep slopes and somehow um, address the the floodway issue. I don't know how, how that would happen. And just knowing what number of units we would be putting with one point of access through the floodway was important to us to understand how this site would function. Thanks. All right. If there are no other um, questions, no further discussion from the commissioners, we need a motion. 
Move approval of staff's recommendation. Second. All right, so any questions? Seeing none, um, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. aye. Any opposed? Abstaining. Okay, so the ayes have it. So staff's recommendation of disapproval has been approved. Okay, item 20 is done. <laughs> we are now going to, let's see. Committee, no. Historic zoning. Historic zoning, they received a preservation grant to study uh, secondary buildings and create a plans book. Uh, the process will take about 12 months and include public meetings for community input and updating the design guidelines for the neighborhood conservation district. So um, this is something that they've been working for for a while, so this will be, could have a big impact or have an impact on some of the new, on um, some of the conservation districts. Good to hear, thank you. We have the parks report. We've been having lots of fun at parks. <laughs> I would beat the drum again with Councilman Bednay. Parks and planning both need more funding, and that would help us avoid the situation that just happened on Church Street. Um, the Parks Board met Tuesday and voted 4-3 in favor of the land swap, so it will come here next and then go to council. So beat the drum for more money. I agree with you. I voted in favor. <laughs> Well, we're coming to you next, Councilman. You have a legislative update? No. Okay. <laughs> well, that makes it easy. So our next meeting is gonna be December 13th here at 4 p.m. And do you have anything else to add? That meeting is going to be large and in charge in terms of the agenda. We're excited to see all of you here. We need to, we have, we have one, yeah, you're right, you're off the hook. We have, we have one meeting in December, um, and so the agenda tends to be larger for that meeting, but we do that to respect everyone's holiday and family plans later on in the month. So we're really excited to, to see all of you in December. <laughs> and we'll write the commissioners that aren't here and tell them how excited we are to see them here. Lisa's, yes. Yes, we need a quorum in December. All right. We need a quorum plus in yes. December. Okay, well, I think that's it. So meeting is adjourned. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.